So what we were talking about, what I was talking about was, um, is basically doing a quick introduction uh, to those who are new to uh, the group about um, fundamental analysis and the way that I approach fundamental analysis and why all roads lead to interest rates and really the importance of um, looking at interest rates, interest rate divergences between central banks, right? So there are really two things that I believe that really drive the market over the medium to long term. In the short term, it's all about, you know, well, mainly about liquidity, market making, etc. But overall, when we see overall trends or auctions or what is known as ranges, sideways moving markets, um, typically, that's, uh, you know, I guess, uh, providing liquidity for institutions and market making, right? And so from uh, the perspective of interest rates, so let's look at, at, at this in terms of, um, uh, oh, they've done a, a new annotation tool, right? Can you guys see my drawing tool, right? I'm going to write something. Can you see that? Can you guys see that on the screen? Yep. All right. Brilliant. So this is interest rates. So the world revolves around interest rates in the financial market. This is my belief. Right. And as well, by the way, and as well, in tandem with uh, row, row. So risk on. Risk off sentiment. Right. So these are the main things that drive markets. So a lot of times what you'll see is uh, is traders will try to derive um, future, um, I guess, future price from looking at the price of other assets. So they will look at, for example, bonds, right? They will look at government treasury bonds and yields, or they will look at, you know, the stock market, right? So stocks, yeah. And even look towards, you know, what we trade, Forex, right and you know commodities for example yeah comms right but all of these in some way shape or form have an in, have an influence or are, are are influenced by interest rates right now the main thing that interest rates uh, what well, moves interest rates are is gdp and inflation Right, inflation, INF, it's meant to be an F. Right, so these two things, right, one, two, have a direct influence upon interest rates. And I'm not going to go over, you know, the whole thing, but most we should know why, right? So just basic on a basic understanding, if GDP is contracting, yeah, meaning it's going into uh, a recession potentially or the bust or slump phase of the economic cycle. Central banks will typically cut rates to stimulate the economy, uh, cause cheaper borrowing, for example, for businesses um, and borrowing and lending. Right. So they will cut interest rates in a recession. Yeah. Now, um, and if they're not in a recession uh, and we have growth, what typically tend then tends to happen is that central banks will likely uh, hike rates because as we grow, um, uh, it uh, in an economy it it can cause inflation to rise right and so inflation rising meaning um, the currency is devaluing then um, central banks will typically tend to hike rates if they if they if inflation is not at the two percent target right so two percent is the target yeah so overall interest rates are directly controlled by what is happening with GDP yeah and and interest rates yeah now. Bonds, right? Bond yields, treasury bonds, prices and yields, right? These guys, a lot of people will say, oh, well, look at bonds and then bonds will tell you what's going on. Yeah, which is half true, but bonds, right, take their cues from what is happening either in the economy, right? Inflation, which is basically, and what's going on with interest rates. Yeah. So, not to get into you know bond yields and bond prices, but we know that for example when um, inflation rises, bond yields rise. Yeah, two-year, ten-year treasury treasury yields. Right, and so bonds are highly sensitive to central bank 
interest rates. So if we know what's going on with monetary policy, yeah, we that should be reflected in bond prices and bond yields. Yeah, there's no point in looking at bond yields to tell you, you know, I mean, you could to be to be fair, right? But you could skip bonds and just look directly at what the central bank is saying and what the market believes, you know, with regards to GDP and inflation, and then that will be, you know, that will reflect in bonds. Yeah. So, as I say, you know, we use if we're looking at bond yields, it's just really a confirmation of what we already know. Yeah, you're getting it from the source, and then bonds are going to either agree. Yeah, are either going to agree? Yeah, bonds are debt, basically. Yeah, absolutely, Spencer. Bonds are debt, right? But I, I don't want to get into the into the. You know, you can go to the bonds channel and look up if if anyone isn't too sure what bond treasury bonds and yields are. Um, you can go to the bonds channel. But but for those of you who do know the relationship between you know uh, bonds and and forex, for example, and bonds and interest rates, yeah, and yields, then you understand that bonds right are looking at interest rates so when we know that for example a central bank is hiking rates all you do all you're doing is and whether you know the smart money is likely to um to to hike rates or not yeah whether the economy is doing good or whether it's doing bad yeah then bonds are just confirming that depending on the yields right whether yields are going you know higher or lower right but you don't necessarily need to 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 look at bond prices and look at support and resistance in order to understand what's going on with interest rates it's the other way around right so again the center of the universe is interest rates right and risk on risk off we look at forex forex um we know this yeah is driven by interest rates right over the medium to long term reason being is because we know that you know, uh, a, a interest rate hikes are basically appreciating a currency, right? You're raising um, uh, the, the borrowing and lending costs, right? Which affects uh, Forex, yeah? And the value of, of Forex. So for example, you know, if you're raising interest rates, um, uh, the, the idea of raising interest rates is to make, um, is to give the, uh, the, the, the borrower, I guess, a, a higher yield, right? Which creates demand for that currency. And if you're cutting rates, then instinctively forex traders or buyers or holders right are going to end up coming out of that currency because you're getting less of a yield to hold the currency and maybe try to look for another currency with a higher yield it's like going to you know two different banks right so you go to bank a bank b right i know it's a house but i don't know how, you know to draw a bank but yeah just bank a and bank b right on a high street and if one is giving you let's say for example i mean this is a very basic term by the way just just on the, on the surface level if one is offering you one percent and one is offering you five percent yeah then most people are going to go with the five percent because you're going to get more yield right so that's going to have more demand right it's going to be stronger right and appreciate whereas this one is going to be less strong Right. There are situations, by the way, where you may want to buy one over five, but I don't want to necessarily cover it in, in this. I'm just trying to get the uh, the basics out of the way. Right. And then we look at, for example, stocks. Right. So we know before, actually before we look at stocks, just to again, just to reiterate, remember that Forex, you're looking directly really at interest rates and I guess more risk sentiment as well. Yeah. In order to decide whether you want to be a buyer or seller over the medium to long term, right? In terms of Forex. Stocks is pretty much similar in terms of just the, the borrowing side of things, right? So when you have an environment where you have low borrowing costs, let's say for example, you can borrow money at 1%, yeah? Because stocks are basically seen as a, a risky asset, right? Risky, right? Risky. Right, so in the risk on environment, meaning that you want to put risk on the table, yeah. More risky than bonds, by the way, because stocks and bonds. That's why they say you have a you know 60-40 portfolio, you know, historically of stocks and bonds, where you're you're looking at in a risk off environment, you put your money in bonds, and if you're in a in a risk on environment, you're you're typically putting your money into stocks, right? So risky. So stocks indices etc are typically driven uh, or can be driven right by again 
the economy, right, and, 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 and inflation, which is basically drives interest rates, right, which means that if you're if you think that you want you can make basically more money than you know you're, what you're what you're basically borrowing for, let's say five percent, let's say also let's say one percent, yeah, then you're going to you know want to try to get more money than what you're borrowing for, right? So let's say for example you think the stock market typically you know does a, you know an average of return of maybe something like you know seven percent, let's say, right? Let's say let's say seven percent a year, right? It's a no brainer to borrow at one percent and see if you can make seven percent in stocks due to the volatility, right? But if, for example, yeah, let's say, you know, you want to borrow, borrowing in your country is, let's say, for example, 8%, yeah? It doesn't make sense to try to put it into stocks because you may not, you, you're going to borrow at 8%, but you might not get necessarily the yield, you know, that, you, that you're looking for in stocks. So what typically tends to happen in an environment where you have low, um, low borrowing, yeah, in terms of a, a low borrowing rate or low interest rates, yeah stocks typically tend to rise yeah also as well um another way around that is that a country might might have for example a higher interest rate yeah but they may want to borrow in another current currency yeah which is for example this would be maybe like the yen right and the yen is basically negative interest rates right this is what's known as the carry trade and basically borrow the yen and invest in another currency with a higher yielding um, uh, interest rate, for example, the USD. This is the reason why we've seen over the past year, or the main reason why we've seen over the past year, the dollar yen, you know, go to the upside do this massive run simply because it's known as a carry trade where you're borrowing the yen for a cheaper interest rate and you're buying the um, the dollar or you're investing in the dollar or holding dollar at 5% and you're getting the difference between the two, right? And so, but going back to stocks, right? That, again, is directly interest um, uh, uh, affected, right? I'll say directly, but directly and sometimes indirectly um, affected by what happens from a monetary policy perspective, yeah? So interest rates, again, be in the center of the universe, right? Or at least close to it. Now, commodities, slightly different. They are governed really more by supply and demand, uh, global supply and demand. And um, apart from, you know, commodities are obviously different. You've got agriculture, you've got precious metals, etc. Now, um, with commodities, um, let's say, for example, like gold and silver, right? Again, it's really affected by interest rates why because gold right does not offer yeah a yield right if you're holding gold pretty much you got to wait for the price to go up in order for you to realize some gains right whereas um if i'm holding the us dollar for example which is giving me let's say for example five percent yeah a five percent yield for just holding the dollar and i'm not getting nothing by holding gold then guess what you're going to do most traders are going to want to hold gold. Same thing with bond and bond yields, right? So bond yields, if bond yields are, you know, a two-year or a 10-year or five-year is somewhere around that 5%, 4% uh, mark, right? I'm going to hold, I'm, I'd rather hold treasury bonds, yeah, over gold. So money will end up flying out of gold into higher yielding assets because I'm pretty much just holding and doing nothing and getting a return on you know my couple millions or whatever it is i've got invested so from that perspective interest rates yeah and again bonds will be affected by interest rates um gold affected by interest rates because gold is obviously um interest rates on the on for example the us dollar is higher right so gold whether you think about it directly or indirectly is still affected by what happens with central bank monetary policy and interest rates yeah other currencies, I mean, other commodities, sorry, like, um, let's say, oil or, or natural gas or copper, right, is not necessarily, it's not necessarily interest rate um, affected, it affects directly interest rates, but it kind of, you know, rising oil, for example, will affect inflation or higher commodity prices uh, uh, are a contributing factor to inflation. And if rising inflation... If you've got rising oil prices due to, you know, more demand than supply, then 
um, that puts pressure on inflation, right? And then inflation, if inflation is high, then eventually you're going to have higher interest rates because, you know, central banks are mandated to get their central, um, their, their inflation target down to 2%. So if it's above 2% and you've got rising oil prices, rising commodity prices, inflation, you know, that contributes to rising inflation and then interest rates are going to be affected, you know, etc right and the same thing if you've got you know prices falling with um with with commodities so interest rates and commodities uh diff a different type of relationship but overall overall it's my belief and uh, many of you guys who have been here for 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 a while and trading 180 will understand and see the effects now you won't see the effects of interest rates over a day you know or over a week it's very difficult to um, to trade any kind of interest rate differentials over a short period of time. There are times where obviously things have to be priced in, of course, you know, where um, the market needs to price in rate hikes or rate cuts. For example, you know, there are events that will surprise the market and, you know, the market is always, um, uh, you know, uh, as far as the news may not necessarily come out as expected. It could be positive or negative. But the point being is that in the short term, it's very, 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 very difficult to look at interest rates, yeah, and then be guided by that as to you know which way you want to buy or sell. But you'll see that manifest as far as you know interest rate differentials over the medium to long term. Medium to long term, we're looking at time frames. You're looking at you know uh, a month or two to you know maybe six months to over a year. And so, I just wanted to really kind of go over. My philosophy of my, I guess, um, uh, my, my my approach and looking at um, interest rates also as well, risk on, risk off is, you know, more, more of the emotional side. If we do have risk events, for example, COVID, you know, there's the, the Ukraine war, um, government shutdowns, for example, anything where there's uh, fear, uncertainty and doubt in the market, um, you know, uh, uh, traders will then go into uh, defensive mode, right? And safe haven assets. And safe haven assets t typically tend to be bonds, typically historically was gold, for example, um, and, you know, uh, currencies like the yen, the dollar, as well as the Swiss franc, right? In a risk, in a risk off uh, environment. And so it doesn't necessarily matter fundamentally, right? Whether you want to be a buyer, whether a, a let's say for example a central bank let's say i don't know um uh, the, the the australian dollar is the only central bank yeah is the only central bank that is hiking rates in a risk off environment yeah it that goes out of the window temporarily until the risk off sentiment or that risk off event gets resolved you you shouldn't really be buying the australian dollar in a risk off environment yeah, when there's fear, uncertainty, and doubt, it's just something that you that that would you know risk off is going to override what we would typically um, trade in terms of our fundamental bias. Yeah, when the coast is clear, when everything is fine again, and when things have gone back to some sort of normality, or when that risk off event has been priced in, then we can start to. Um, look to buy, you know, risk on assets. Typically, for example, you know, stocks, etc. You know, certain forex pairs and uh, and the like. So, with that being said, that is the a general overview of how interest rates is the center of the financial universe. <laughs> well, that's my, my that's my case for it. You may or may not. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The circle of life. You may or may not agree with it, but that is my uh, approach. And um, and if you have any comments, I'll just read out some of the comments. So Eagle says, remember, for the new people here, there will always be pullbacks. So don't get discouraged. Even, oh, sorry, if, for example, now EuroCAD is bearish, but you will see pullbacks. Sorry, one second. But you see pullbacks um, up like you see now. But we know overall fundamental trend for EuroCAD is down bearish. Um, same goes with other currencies or any trading assets on equity markets. And this is a, this is a great point that you make as well, right? This is a great point that you make as well, Igor. And I'm going to get to some of the other comments as well. But I just want to touch on Igor's um, 
Eagles comments and let me just delete clear all drawings right so I know some of you have come in um, and are looking at definitely day trading strategies now 